how do we create a safe environment right in the organization where people can they stress they can come and talk to their manager or their colleagues or hr yeah stress is the commonly used word sometimes people also use the word i'm depressed according to me depressed is a big word you are feeling sad it doesn't mean you are depressed people should deal mental health as a muscle right so if you're weak and doctor says okay you have to go and exercise you do it a consistent period of time and so if you're weak or we feel that we need to consult something you need to go build that muscle sometimes sharing also reduces the burden somebody has not experienced a mental health issue cannot understand what you are going through hello everybody welcome back to pathlock lounge in current installment of pathlock lounge we welcome dr navin jairam an industry veteran who's focused on helping and understanding people facing mental health issues. In today's session, we're going to talk about how to build resilience at workplace as well as dealing with mental health issues and stress at work. Welcome to Pathlock Lounge, Naveen. Very happy to have you here. Today, I'm, I'm very excited to talk about this topic. This is very close to my heart. The topic of resilience and mental health, which is very relevant in what has happened in the last four years. So uh, I'm glad you can join us and I look forward to our discussion. Thank you, Piyush, for inviting me. I'm also looking forward to this talk. Yeah. Great. So let's dive into this. So can you talk about how does a uh, human mind work in terms of how we should think about mind versus a uh, uh, physical body right yeah so of course so this is a very relevant question so when we talk about mind this is a uh, i would uh, equate it to a software you know like uh, brain is the organ and mind is the software which runs it so for example if you take a computer there's a software which runs it software can only be felt only be experienced you can't look at it whereas brain you can see brain is the structure and you can see and there are tools also to look at the structure so hardware but mind is the software so this is what we call it as so mind is something which is the processing unit of the entire body i would say so each and every cell each and every tissue of the body is connected to our mind so everything from childhood till now is also stored in the mind so there's a big storehouse database there are a lot of uh, connections from mind to body there are a lot of uh, you know you can say cells are growing inputs are happening so it's an amazing uh, structure we have so i would call it a ceo <laughs> that's the ceo of the body right so yeah. without mind i think nothing can function so uh, it's a most important part of the body um again um you know we can equate it that um mind becomes more important when we have to do any kind of activity for that matter so even though voluntarily i'm moving my hand but my mind is playing a role i'm speaking to you now again my mind is playing a role i'm aware of the surroundings again my mind is playing a role so it's an amazing structure which is uh, which helps us to feel think understand express ourselves and also you know the feelings of positive feelings negative feelings it's a wonderful tool which gives us a lot of experiential thing we, we tell right life has to be experienced Experience, so yeah. how are we going to experience life is through our brain or our mind this is the one which is going to take us for a journey and uh, every moment i think every second it is going to give us a lot of um, inputs lot of things to relish experience enrich our life so that's what i would call it as probably it's the software program which we can't see of course which we can which can be only felt and it delves us into an amazing enriching experience every second every moment thank you thanks for that that's a very interesting uh, analogy to compare it with so when we think about mind what about emotions what are the emotional drivers which uh, make the software operate if i yeah. say <laughs> yeah correct so uh, let us imagine when uh, we are born so when we are born we have uh, 300 billion neurons 300 billion neurons so the infant will have 300 billion neurons and as we grow up into an adult it becomes 
100 billion neurons. 100 billion neurons are connected with each other. So it's a complex network of phenomenon, which will be, uh, you know, it's difficult to imagine that, you know, 100 billion, billion neurons are there and they are connected. So mind develops from the time of birth. So from there it starts and every experience the child goes through. So what happens is, how are we going to perceive experiences? We are going to perceive experiences through our senses. So it starts with senses. The child sees something, develops walking, develops. So everything is happening. Integration and development happens throughout uh, the, uh, you know, throughout the development of the child. So what happens is that, so mind develops from day one. Every experience the child takes will be registered. So that is how we learn. That is how we learn about things. For example, let us say something is dangerous. How will you know? You touch it, you feel something. Then immediately you realize that, oh, I should not be touching it again. So this is a kind of learning. Or sometimes people will make us learn. They will tell us this is bad, this is good. So what happens is that up to the age of eight years, we are like almost like a sponge kept inside the water. What will the sponge do? It will absorb everything. So most of the time what happens is that our development in terms of you are asking about emotions, most of the emotional things we encounter gets programmed inside us as early as eight to nine year old. That's what we tell the initial days of development is very, very crucial for your character and for your, you know, how you're going to be, what kind of a person you're going to be is totally determinant on your upbringing, especially right. we call it as a formative years of life. So this is where after the eight or you know 10 years of age, you know, some kind of a filter develops. Filter in the sense like we get exposed to peer group, we get exposed to a lot of uh, cultural, religious, educational, other conditionings. So then what happens is that we call it as rules of life. Sometimes we call it as belief systems. So belief systems start developing. So this is when, uh, you know, uh, the real uh, challenge comes. For example, belief systems are not right or wrong. They are the systems which are there, they're existing, and you are part of it. Religious belief system. So if you go to some place of worship, you're going to do certain things that you learn through this experience. Also, probably people will teach you certain things that, okay, you should not steal, you should not do this, this is bad, this is good. So these becomes your belief systems. All of us, each one of us will have N number of belief systems. Just to name it, they're not right or wrong. That's how you're being brought up. The emotions are very important when your belief systems matches with your experience. You get an amazing, wonderful feelings because hey, it sings with me. I'm The person is supposed to say this. He says it. It brings a very nice feeling in me. The moment the experiences doesn't match my belief system, that is when the negative emotions start. So, I mean, you can't control it. It's just that, oh, I'm, I'm not able to understand what is happening. You know, for example, to give an example, let us say your belief system says that everybody should follow traffic rules and, you know, you have to follow lane discipline and everything should be proper. And when you go to a real time experience, it is opposite. Mm -hmm. Immediately the emotion gets generated, right? It might be, we might call it as frustration, irritation or anger, mm -hmm. but within a fraction of a second, the person experiences that. And that's how the neural pathways develop. I'm just giving an example. So let us say this person is going on with these kind of things, you know, where his experiences are not matching with his belief system. And it gets accumulated. That's the, that is what we call as habituation or neural pathway. So once the neural pathway is done, whenever the person is in real situation or in an imagined situation, for example, just thinking about, I have to drive in this traffic, itself will bring the emotions on the body. So that's how the emotions mostly develop from our childhood. So how our parents treated us, how much warmth they gave us, how much love they gave us, how much they connected with us, all these things will shape us. So that is how we, we are going to carry it. So we have absorbed these things and this is what is going to shape us. So I would say around before the teenage 12, 13 years, our core belief systems are already set. This is, this is what we need to understand when we are dealing with it. Most of the emotional regulation patterns are set by that age. Rest of the things will just like there are the toppings, you know, you get added up. 
So until and unless you don't introspect yourself, you're not going to find out what is my core belief systems. And that's what shapes your perception of yourself, the world around you and the people around you. So this is how the emotional regulation develops from childhood. That's very helpful. I mean, this, this goes back to what I heard about stress was something which is unexpected and you can't control. And uh, if you can't control, then it brings the negative emotion. So how, how, how does stress play into the belief system? How do we tie emotions which are inherent in terms of what you feel in certain situations to how people deal with stress or what drives stress? Uh, that's a wonderful question. Because I think we have to, to answer this, we have to go through evolution. The main uh, reason for evolution are survival. Survival is the key for any organism for that matter. So we are also ingrained with that. The basic thing is you have to survive. So in order to survive, you need to have a warning system. That warning system is what we call as fight or flight response, adrenergic or adrenaline rush, what we call as. So this is inherent to everybody. So this is inherent to everybody. Whenever we are threatened or our survival is threatened, our body will start reacting. That adrenaline rush happens for us. For example, if an animal is in danger, this thing will help the animal to run away from the danger. So that's where adrenaline rush is necessary. Okay. Probably during our evolution, initially we were also scared of animals or different kind of situations. But currently, the survival mechanism has shifted into stress. So I, I, would, I would call it as a you know bell-shaped curve. So now if you take an inverted bell-shaped curve, so you need an optimum amount of stress to do anything. You have to. For example, if you have to study, why, why would you study? For example, mathematics. So I might be from biology stream. Yeah. So I might not be using that much mathematics. But during the initial years of our studies, we have to study that. So then you need an optimum amount of stress. So probably 20, 30 years down the lane, the optimum amount of stress was punishment. Punishment driven things. Yeah. More than, Of course, reward was also there, but reward was late. So it was more of punishment. If I don't do this, I'll get punished. So now what happens is that it is, we are thinking at more reward driven. So you need to keep that optimum amount of stress to perform tasks. It could be anything. It could be a work related, personal life or anything. The moment that, that much amount of motivation or that positive stress doesn't get generated inside you, then you will be underproductive. It is very hard for you to do anything. You can't take the initiative. Sometimes we see, we tell, oh, I can't take the initiative. What is this person doing in life? Well, I, I'm able to do something why this person is not able to do. So that's where the, the, there's not enough motivation coming, right? And sometimes if it becomes counterproductive, the, it crosses the balance thing, becomes more. Again, that affects your productivity. So it ranges from underproductivity to, again, low productivity. Oh, counterproductive, it becomes counterproductive. More the amount of stress, then again, you are not able to. So uh, the idea of having stress, we need positive stress. We need motivation. Positive stress is about persistence, motivation, integrity. You know, I, I, I am accountability. So I have to do this. I am bound to do this. And it will take you to an optimum level. So the moment it crosses again, it becomes very difficult. So I'll give an example again. So sometimes a counterproductive thing, procrastination. So for some people, they need the dead end, the date, you have to finish the task at this time. Till that is not defined, they won't be able to start the task. And again, so they might end up doing it in the last three days or last two days, till the nth moment. And, and that is the time where they, the adrenaline rush kicks in only they, when they know that, oh, I have very less time left. And then, you know, within a span of two to three days, they might end up finishing it. They have a lot of capabilities. You know, they can do it in a much better fashion, but this is what drives most of the people. So that's how it goes. So this can be, this motivation can be a very important factor in all of the aspects. How much physical activity you are doing, you know, how much you are work-life balances, how much you are interacting with your family. So everything contributes through this. So motivation is the key. So that's where positive stress comes from. When it becomes negative, that is where it starts affecting all aspects of your life. That makes sense. I think 
for most of the people who are engineers they might understand it in a very typical belkum fashion that <clears throat> you need the positive stress to drive productivity efficiency in building the skills and trait you need to reach the maximum efficiency level but beyond certain point the positive stress or more stress more uh, driving people in certain direction can become negative and their performance can go down and what they learn and efficiently produce goes down so i i guess that'll be a good way to think about this and i'll keep that in my mind so when when we think about say workplace to start with how do we find out when are people getting stressed which is counterproductive right because typically if you think about in historically um the way managers are perceived is their job is to make people work the max they can they can be most efficient but there is a point where if you try to build more accountability it can be counterproductive as, as as we discussed so how do we find out when it becomes counterproductive yeah from 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 a manager point of view and then we can talk about from individual point of view as well correct i think managers are leaders are managing a large set of people so they will have teams many teams and many people to manage under them so managerial skills again sometimes it comes with your belief system or with your past experiences you have learned about it an element of uh, active listening empathy and patience is very much necessary in the field because you know you need to have these basic qualities as a manager if you have this then probably you will be able to recognize so in order to delegate the work also these skills are necessary you know the, okay this is the team and this is the person who is good at this so delivering and probably work productivity will be good the integrity of manager is again very important for the entire team how much uh, i i would say i use the word grounded how much you are grounded grounded means uh, you have patience and you are present in the moment more so and you can observe people and understand people's emotions much better so emotional regulation also is a very necessary tool for the people so in that sense so the everyday interaction will be there i think even from remote or they are interacting in meetings and many other things so there'll be many many times they will see that the person is talking little differently or in the body language there is a change because we are seeing people every day so we'll be able to identify when a minute test change happening in the people's behavior or are they most of the emotions i don't think it will get expressed during the conversation but i think certain things with the tone of the voice how they are talking how they are communicating and uh, what are the reasons they are giving why they are not able to do the work so these are some of the questions generally i think any manager would ask at an individual level what happens is as uh, you know we define uh, the red flags with uh, these four uh, main symptoms you know uh, one is the emotional symptoms emotional symptoms being you know person might be feeling sad anxious worried or lot of thoughts are coming to his mind and uh, you know very becoming very emotional a very simple thing can generate huge amount of emotions inside them not able to regulate it suddenly feel like crying so not in a situation where it is warranted but still the crying happens so emotions get you know overwhelming that is those are called emotional symptoms sometimes it uh, happens with cognitive symptoms cognitive is your executive function faculty not able to concentrate on work not motivated enough to get up and do the work energy levels are lacking so you know uh, the you can't finish the simplest of the task so you start with something get distracted and not able to finish and that becomes like a vicious loop so cognitive symptoms is the second thing sometimes people will experience what is called as physical symptoms so aches and pains uh pain in the different parts of the body and extreme fatigue energy loss they can also have some kind of worsening of already existing condition for for example it might be irritable bowel syndrome digestion issues muscle pains so so many things come under physical symptoms and uh, finally the you know behavioral behavioral is uh, you know you can see that the person is lashing out yeah. or the body language it is getting expressed is in a hurry or not listening properly earlier the person was doing fine but now there's slight change in the personality which we can identify so based on these dimensions we will look for red flags having said that how long the person should have these symptoms that's very important somebody not able to sleep one day 
they won't be able to function the next day oh some there are people they can't sleep for 2 hours they can't do anything next day there are some people who can to sleep only 2 hours per day and they can function normally the next day so it depends on the person and so intensity of symptoms is very important acutely also let us say 2 3 days and lot of emotions are overpowering panic attacks are happening that definitely warrants an immediate intervention but most of the time any acute kind of a thing usually settles down you know within a span of one week it should settle down something brought some symptoms some interaction or something brought some symptoms and within a week they have done some uh, they have taken some steps and you know calm down spoke to somebody probably it settles down anything is persisting beyond one week and the intensity of symptoms are high probably in the workplace it is about not productive taking a lot of leaves yeah unable to do even the simplest of the task and you know probably giving a lot of reasons you know i can't might not be telling you directly <laughs> that this is what is happening but probably giving a lot of reasons so these are all the things manager needs to pick up so it depends that's what as the person is more integrated they'll be able to identify even a small change in the body language also can be picked and uh, then as i told that they need that skills to probably communicate or ask about what happened or what is the reason do you need any kind of support so that makes a huge difference uh, i see a lot of people who come to me because of workplace stress or having a condition it might be diagnosable condition like anxiety or a panic disorder or it might be some kind of stress related adjustment issues and stuff so uh, then they don't know whom to reach out there are there are people who say yes my manager understands and he had a word with me and is able to accommodate but uh, there are many situations where they are clueless you know there there were some examples uh, people were telling me that i told my manager i'm going through anxiety i don't know a uh, lot of challenges are happening in my life and the response i got was i i have also faced anxiety so many times in my yeah. life what is the big deal with that so yeah. <laughs> that's where you know th- th- this is probably not empathy or sympathy this is like you are completely uh, you know declining what the person mm-hmm. is trying to so that stops people from sharing it, it so happens for example let us say somebody is close to me and he comes and tells me oh i've been not sleeping well hey relax do something just listen to something listen to some music and we, we jump into solutions yeah it makes sense we need to provide a safe environment to employees to talk about it right and and this brings the next topic right because it, it, i think stress or continued stress is uh, somewhat linked to or at least perceived to be linked to mental health right and uh, stress is something people can talk about they can say you know there's a lot of stress i'm super busy i hear this all the time that uh, you talk to them first question is when i meet somebody is like how are you doing and sometimes a small talk sometimes they'll say oh a lot of things are going on um uh, sometimes people use word like i'm overwhelmed or i'm stressed but there's still a taboo about say talking about stuff which are considered in the category of mental health right and uh, i i think recently last few years it is it is okay but still i think uh, there is a discomfort in somebody talking about mental health and i'm i'm there are a different level of what is considered mental, mental health so how do, how do we create a safe environment right in the organization where people can do exactly what you're talking about if they're stressed they can come and talk to their manager or their colleagues or hr um about generally mental health and maybe use the word mental health right yeah so uh, yeah stress is the commonly used word for example i i know uh, sometimes people also use the word i'm depressed but I, according to me depressed is a big word it's a disorder depression is big uh you are feeling sad it doesn't mean you are depressed so depression is a l- big disorder we commonly use th- those words very often oh i'm feeling depressed for one week and things like that so in a probably in a lighter note that's how people look at it but when acute stress happens acute stress i would say which would last for a period of 72 hours to one week or something like that we will somehow come out of it we'll take some measures and we'll come out of it so when we mention about chronic stress chronic stress what is happening in the body is there is a persistent elevation in that adrenaline rush what i described previously so any emotion it's not just fear any kind of thing will activate the system and it becomes chronic 
when i say chronic it is going to last for weeks together months together when we are with some kind of behavior thoughts and feelings for a long period of time then that is habituated that is when it turns into a disorder means you are programmed to be the same it gets habituated because you are we know that you know if we exercise for a period of 3 to 4 weeks we build good stamina and we can see the fitness improving that's how the neural pathways work the same way happens here also so there's an inner self the observer self we call it as the subconscious mind it observes everything so the inner intelligence is observing even though you know that is like giving you a background messages oh you're not doing anything you're good for nothing nothing is happening you're just escaping the person will be aware of it but as you rightly mentioned stigma still prevails especially when we talk about mental health because boldly telling that i'm going to a mental health professional i'm meeting a doctor i'm meeting oh really for your mind what is wrong with you that's the immediate response from many people but people are much better now they are very sensitive they are able to understand you know there are many people who recommend no i think i also reached out i didn't open up but i also reached out in one to one conversation that i think you should do that they are able to identify now that's that's really a good change step, right. which is happening nowadays as you rightly mentioned but having said that so once it becomes chronic it's part of you it's part of your personality so until unless you become aware you are already aware most of the people are aware because we have lot of information about mental health nowadays in social media in all possible ways awareness is there the next step is accepting that and taking a step that's where it becomes really challenging for the people stigma is there and you know what the manager might think about me another worry will be okay they will start judging me so can the so safe environment safe i mean environment is the important part i'm not solution focused i'm going to understand you and i'm going to give a relevant solution in terms of you know whatever accommodations i can give you for the work probably i can help you with that or if you require a further evaluation probably i can give you a source of contact you know and that thing so how many people or managers are equipped to keep it confidential yeah it is absolutely critical when i think about the safe environment is not just in the the health policy or the hr policy or or the culture it has to come as part of how people operate right um and uh, as you mentioned i think one of the insights i i'm hearing from this is people should deal mental health as a muscle right so if you're weak and doctor says okay you have to go and exercise you do it a consistent period of time it builds the muscle and so if you're weak or we feel that we need to consult something you need to go build that muscle right um, and it can works in reverse as well if you have a constant stress over a long period of time uh, it can become an injury which yes. is no it is very surprising that now we are understanding that even this diseases of the body including cancer is contributed because of your toxic emotions anything you name it how we understand the body is the body is amazingly programmed right for example we have voluntary control over some actions what about the involuntary actions you know so I, this is a very important example i'll give you let us say you have breakfast every day hmm sharp 7 am that is your routine this yeah. also habituation happens right so once every day 7 am you are eating a particular kind of a food your digestive system will be ready a five minutes before and it already knows what you're going to eat also right and that is the conditioning i'm talking about so it's wonderful if you go deeper into the body says but it's wonderful so it knows what kind of food you're going to eat and what kind of digestive juices should be ready the moment meal is inside your mouth the whole system starts and it is in autopilot mode we are not telling the stomach to release digestive juices it's already programmed inside us and it knows how much juice need to be released how the digestive process should happen so what is happening because of your day schedule or because of your tension you are not taking food at 7 am you are altering it you are eating different kinds of food sometimes you are working empty stomach then the system gets confused too much of hazard lifestyles every day you are going to have a difficult digestion for sure because the system you have to tune it same thing with the mind and the body 
everything works with we call them as circadian rhythms so it works with the rhythm sleeping rhythm eating rhythm these rhythms are the basic things so when when we talk about stress the first thing is this is your rhythms okay because when you have a regular rhythm of these things definitely it works but again these rhythms are linked with how much presence you have yeah. every day how much sincere or disciplined you are so that that is where it comes from no oh, that makes sense so how, as an organization what can we do to build these systems like are there checkpoints where we ask people uh, encourage people to get help or we should talk about this at work or they should not talk about and just talk to a specific person yeah i think one is one one as in organization there can be certain uh, measures and even uh, world health organization defines these things at the organization level there should be certain goals for the mental health of the employees okay that could be probably you know you always talk about that there should be a force to motivate people so some kind of motivation and somebody who has achieved success or somebody who has done amazing work they can definitely motivate so there are some positive enrichment and motivation kind of discussions or workshops and things that is one and second thing is we need to make people aware people understand it too much of information overload is so that will again make decision fatigue is another thing you can't decide okay too much of information to share let us say for example somebody is not sleeping and they go to social media how to sleep better you have 1001 options yeah you know including popping a pill to all natural things do how do you going to decide if it's going to work yeah. and you need 1000 days to try out each each technique so that becomes very difficult mostly what i feel is that in terms of organization level there are certain policies as i mentioned that there are certain talks happening awareness programs we would call it as awareness programs and how emotions affect us how to recognize these emotions how to regulate these emotions better and what are the tools necessary for it so some idea at least you know they, they if they give us some awareness and explain to them for example if if a cardiologist is talking about heart health so what are the signs we need to look for what are the kind of diets we have to eat same thing with the mental health what are the kind of diets so it's overall it's not just managing emotions this is one of the aspect we need to approach it holistically right your diet your circadian rhythms your exercise schedule and time management that's very very important so you need to spend some time doing some activities otherwise resilience cannot be built just like that we cannot overnight it is not possible it requires consistent effort even minimum amount of time but it needs to be practiced on a regular basis so this is what need to be emphasized and definitely it will drive and also certain incentives i think reward programs also happen good feedback or rewarding the employees social rewards or any kind of monetary rewards depending on the set of people these things also are very useful we are all reward dependent yeah so from birth we need that reward mechanism to get activated otherwise it will not drive us towards anything so uh, once we understand these aspects afterwards comes the individual approach so if a person is there probably a open statement that uh, you know you can reach out if anything is too deep probably i can recommend you to meet a mental health expert or we have a tie up with somebody who can help you with this or you know at at my level if i can do something i'm open to it but stigma again see it comes from the background right so if the, if you can't understand it you cannot just ignore it yeah and uh, you have to give a safe environment for them because once the, most of the conditions what they face in, face in the recent job work are stress related that you know they're not very chronic or big mental health disorders i'm not telling there are no people are not suffering from other disorders but most of the thing most majority of the things can be managed very easily identification and right necessary steps is what we need to guide definitely that will help them to do better in terms of their work and also work life balance so certain times it might be a personal issue which is bothering the person and that is impacting the person let us say for example you know uh, one person both parents were going through uh, cancer and uh, so his job got affected yep and uh, they wanted to put him in performance improvement last two months he's been running around the hospitals with chemo radio and he's only checked so these these are very important things you know we all go through this thing we have to take care of our family as well 
and you can't be at two places at the same time yeah. right and you're also not getting rest of course you're trying to juggle with those things and you are very important crucial for the project also they can't find a replacement or something like that in these situations it becomes very overwhelming even for the managers, managers even for the because i mean productivity is getting affected ultimately how far can you understand it yeah can you allow the person okay you take certain situations it might be okay <laughs> but certain times it's again tough for the employer even if you even if the organization is empathetic and you provide support sometimes you need structure how long do i need to provide support are you going to be off for two weeks or a month or three months so that they can plan accordingly that that absolutely makes sense so I, let's switch the same lens to a slightly different perspective of this there's a lot of talk about the working style of different generations these days right and the way i think about this is there is a mental health and there's resilience right um what uh, the conversation right now for people who are from younger generation is around how much resilience do they have they are very conscious about the mental health uh, they want to be happy they are more aware of how do i keep myself healthy mentally or uh, physically but then the question comes to uh, they have been talking in social media or in news about they're not working hard enough and they're taking a lot of time off and uh, so how do we think about resilience for for younger people versus people who people in my generation we, our life was about work and then the concept came about work and life and now people are talking about concept of oh there's a life and work has to fit in my life right so how do we think about resilience work versus um positive stress how it impacts and negative stress how do you think about resilience among the people who are entering the workforce now okay so this is very a uh, wonderful question <laughs> because whenever we talk about mental health we look at the generation uh, related changes as well so yeah if you look at uh, many people who have become very successful i think you can hear them or they've written books about their experiences and all they have had extremely difficult childhood many 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 i mean majority of them so uh, very very uh, difficult childhood lot of difficulties during upbringing and that's what uh, built them into that hard working culture so hard work is definitely necessary the current generation things in a little different way that smart work probably is doable smart work means it's like uh, you're not going to put that much effort and you're going to get things done so when we look at it yeah few people can probably pull through very easily like doing a smart work for that again you have some kind of a talent within you some kind of creative potential which you are having so that might be an advantage over lot of people but looking at them everybody cannot feel that i can also get into that kind of a thing oh um, you know it could be nowadays we see for example when we when we take the previous generation let us say if they have any kind of a talent they want to express it there were no platforms right you have to wait for the right opportunity and right time and probably then you get recognized it is related to your work you are doing something productive and then only you will get your recognition no. when we compare it to now 5 minutes 10 minutes you're there in the platform and uh, you're known worldwide it it does happen we we get this kind of sensations of becoming very important so that, that that that's what goes into their mind nowadays because you're consuming this information more so you equate it to easy yeah. mind also looks for that i i would say you know it's mind also always looks for easy solutions right because for hard work we need patience yep we need to spend more time and we need to be really focused on things for a long time so that is what is the current generation is lacking you know they if they can't spend so much time with that and focusing on something for a long period of time is really challenging the moment oh i get stressed oh i need to take two days break let me look at it the next day so that is where i think the resilience is going into a different state nowadays the previous generation had better resilience and that is where that took them into a better places current generation has high expectations expectations are there information wise you talk to them amazing things will come but in action wise 
there is instead there so, is yeah. it is definitely lacking so we need, we need to find the right balance between between yes but between building the resilience and not going to the other side of the curve where it's more stressful and it's not productive um so it, have you looked at companies or interacted with companies where they have different policies of uh how many vacations people take or uh guidance on training the people have you seen companies doing uh specific programs for um how to motivate people reward versus accountability kind of matrix that you know you give them some carrot for some time build the muscle and uh then hold them accountable right um any guidance you might have yeah. about company uh, i doing? think uh, probably before uh, covid pandemic there were very less kind of interventions like this covid pandemic definitely taught us that mental health is really relevant in these kind of circumstances so post pandemic a lot of companies are definitely coming up with that for example certain companies have a tie up with another firms who offer psychological support one to one connection like to the employees or anybody for that matter relevant problems will be identified or any kind of resolution needs to be provided it should be and there are companies who organize various healing sessions you know i've come across like for example it might be a yoga session or it might be a sound healing session or it might be something like a, a fitness kind of session so all those initiatives probably uh, help people to become aware that i can practice these things and stuff like that but many companies are probably lacking it so you know you don't have that much resources or thought process about implementing these things mental health affects the productivity big time that is really important like a physical thing but mental health again as i told you we cannot objectively quantify, quantify it. it since we can't objectively quantify it it exists it's only a felt symptom we can't see it if <laughs> we have just experiencing it so since it is a felt symptom it becomes very difficult for policy makers also to you know advocate real policies and spend time with that for example it uh, some time back i think this was uh, previously to uh, the pandemic uh, one company had organized a talk on uh, stress management they had kept the title as stress management very few people turned up it's a huge company very few people turned up for the talk and as having a conversation and just asked um, the moment uh, it was stress management everybody thought that oh uh, people will assume that if i am going to this talk oh i'm i'm, I'm going through some kind of an emotional issue that's why i'm here otherwise so that is that was that was there earlier right at the same time uh, you know i had taken some slides to present it Uh, our cardiologist where previous organization where i was working cardiologist went for the talk in the same company it was a big crowd he used all my slides to talk about stress management because again for cardiac health also stress management is very very relevant so th- that is how things were but things are changing but that's how because people don't want you know to talk or them. accept that you know it is very very important for us we have to give importance to it yeah i hope in the future you know people uh, will advocate the world mental health organization also who also gives more importance you know they are talking about organizations and occupational mental health so you know they have to take some policies so organizing these kind of workshops or you know a talk for the managers a training workshop for the managers how they can understand emotions how they can regulate and send people to the relevant uh, person so this also becomes very important so we we spoke about resilience and how organization deal with it how we understand the mechanism which goes on in our mind and how we think about it if we think from an employer point of view from company's point of view what can leaders and managers do to drive resilience in in our organization and through employees right correct so for uh, managers and leaders it's also as i previously mentioned certain necessary skills building resilience is a very important part of their you know presence in the company it is very very important resilience can be meant in different means probably you can use a simple word like holding on being strong persisting consistent you know that is how stretch beyond your limit yeah and then come back so something like that so we can define like that so there will be a time where the work probably is less and then you know it's easy for everybody is doing fine and things are going okay 
and there will be some periods where you need to stretch beyond a point so this is when you need these resources this is like you are stretching that you can't have food on time or long working hours or probably less time to sleep because there's something important has come up the whole team need to be present a lot of challenges so technically so so much of uh, uh, too much of work and too much of emotional things you have to deal with so this is where it is necessary for example it is preparedness we need to be ready to anticipate any kind of thing which might happen uh, it's like i have a gun with me i never fire it and only when war comes i'll go and kill the enemy that's not going to happen because you know you don't know how to fire you have just yeah, kept it at home so that is where the practices come into play practices in terms of you need to have some kind of a time for yourself every day this is very very important the me time or that your time in out of family out of work life balance and everything and certain practices are necessary for us for example as i was mentioning about emotions your breathing is very important every emotion you go through your breathing changes for example you are very angry you have to have a shallow breathing you can't take a deep breath and be angry at the same time impossible body works that way to get angry the breathing should become very fast and shallow then only you can react in that way same thing happens with anxiety right and somebody is emotional and sad breathing is different so that is how breath modulation is very very important in building resilience also since breathing is happening constantly that is one of the major tool for mindfulness as well so mindfulness practices and breathing practices are a must you know so you need to be relaxed in the moment you need to be present in the moment complete presence not just physical presence you are there completely these two will help you to recognize anything so here what happens there will be an heightened awareness you know about things happening and there is a good emotional regulation the moment you are calm anything coming from the past anything happening around you will be able to recognize easily because you know you are in a very calm wavelength so that serves you to understand what is happening around you the moment emotions are on calmness goes off your thinking logical reasoning everything goes off that's how it is when body is experiencing emotion or mind is experiencing emotion the only thing mind thinks of is taking care of emotion it doesn't bother about other things so logical reasoning or executive functions thinking goes for a back seat that is the reason why you need to have some tools to be in the present mindfulness exercises just i'll give some importance about mindfulness exercises what binds us to the present moment is our senses okay senses sense organs so basically our vision all five senses are binding us to the present moment the moment you close your eyes one sense is off then you are with other remaining senses so if we can manage our senses it will bring us to the mindful state right for example you know looking at five objects in front of you trying to recall it listening to five different sounds happening around you observing five different body parts just grounding yourself okay i'm observing closing your eyes observe and observing your breathing that will definitely bring back presence so you'll be in the present moment with the simple 1 minute 2 minute practice five breaths observing your nostrils five breaths observing your chest region five breaths observing your tummy region so three different wavelengths of breathing close your eyes and do this and immediately presence comes back alternate nostril breathing 2 minutes brings back presence this is a wonderful tool you know what our uh, um, ancient scriptures have given us so these kind of practices on a day to day basis i would say at least 20 minutes you can spend every day and meditative practices of course so breathing techniques meditative practices are very very important if you practice it then you are trained in these things so calmness will naturally come before the emotional reaction calmness will come you should become aware i am working on this particular character of mine i will immediately react i need to delay it so in order to delay you need these tools you need to practice then you'll be able to delay and once you delay you have to give reward to yourself that okay i managed it last time it was bad this time it was manageable next time it was much better so the third aspect is positive affirmation affirmation is very important so we are tuned to like busy life stressful life you are tuned to look at inadequacies what is not happening 
what is not working out i could have done it better this is what i think we are looking at more of things which are not i mean important Radical. in this moment in this moment today i have control what are important today whatever i did it might be a daily routine thing but we, we there should be a reason to feel good about minutest things so yeah. this is another important thing recognizing whatever is happening being in the present moment builds very good resilience so being in the present and recognizing and feeling good about it it might it might be a simple task you finished it then you need to feel good we can't always wait for a target you know achieve that and feel good minor minor actions of ours can anything with gives satiety to the five senses can be felt as a very good relevant thing yeah to celebrate the smaller moments yes while you wait for work towards the bigger moments yes well, right so that makes sense so how how do we how do we think about taking breaks during the work um some people have capacity to go on for a long time taking breaks during the work sleep or even taking holidays um how should companies think about it like do we talk about these things or uh, encourage people to do it um do you have any thoughts about that again i would i would start with there should be a balance for this yeah definitely these are all relevant taking a break is very very necessary in the current current scenario i think a lot of people talk about that i'm taking sabbatical i'm taking break for few months because i need to work on my mental health i need to work on my physical health so it is very very relevant that they need some breaks especially during work also if somebody has to stretch continuously for 14 to 16 hours 5 days per week it becomes really challenging and your weekend goes just to get out of this kind of a phenomenon and again you have to come back so if this goes on for a long time this is definitely not healthy but you can't help it also because work has to move on so this is where some kind of strategies are necessary that you know once you have overstretched resilience you you take some break to come back with that hierarchy you stretched beyond a point you come back to the present give some time relax sleep well eat well probably spend some time and again come back and work that is relevant what happens with most of the people is the planning is also very important when are you planning the leave how are you planning the leave that also takes relevance because okay i will stretch it for a month and then i take two days three days break probably the damage what body and mind has probably to go through it is already embedded in it another two three days of break is not going to make any huge difference right and also whenever somebody is going through a mental illness or anxiety or any kind of diagnosable mental disorder they won't be able to work they won't be able to contribute if it is a physical i tell people if it is a physical problem you have a fracture or you have dengue fever or anything obviously you can't work and you're on leave when it comes to mental health you have to deal with the disorder itself and also you have to deal with the family you have to deal with your day to day activities how mental faculty is not supporting yeah. you so you won't be able to do that is the relevant time to seek medical help and also take medical leave right recover come back and then you can start so this is where the balance is very much necessary so relevant probably some people you know once they understand and they get a relevant break they they will they will come back they will definitely perform well you you might also have seen lot of people who have put under performance program and they have come back they have come back with the same integrity and they are able to continue most of the people so that that's very very relevant that leaves and other things need to be planned and that definitely helps the individual to recover and come back i equate mental illness to physical illness it it has to be given same importance when it comes to mind you manage it when it comes to thoughts you manage it yourself because it is not seen so we should consider the same if somebody is in a depression state they won't be able to concentrate they won't be able to work productivity will not happen no matter what until they come out of that state of mind yeah it makes sense so i think one of the last questions i have is what will you recommend for people is it should people take responsibility of their own mental health they how, what will you recommend somebody who's already identified that they are not able to operate at a level which they used to or they would like to they should take ownership or get help how how should they think about it what will be a message for individual people who who are sort of battling with everything and they've already identified that you know something is not working right uh, correct so individually as i told you many people will have awareness so awareness is easily comes i'm going through something i'm aware of 
what next to do that's the thing stigma is one thing which delays it or you know sometimes they try to speak to somebody they completely undermined it or jumped into solution that is what you know again demotivates them to reach out so once they are facing significant amount of symptoms sometimes there might be somebody who is a manager or is a good friend who is very good at listening doesn't jump into suggestions or good active listening happens sometimes sharing also reduces the burden immediately but certain times certain disorder it has gone to a disorder level where there is significant distress and dysfunction they have to definitely reach for professional help so again there is a lot of stigma about reaching to a professional help okay let me deal with this condition only with therapy i am not going to use any kind of medical help i am going to do natural things to become better right so that again consumes some time it takes already symptoms are going on for a month period and another few more days course what i feel is even to practice anything naturally right if you can practice naturally some things you can change your life so easily also so that's where the question comes sometimes we need medical interventions also it's not for everybody everybody who walks in might not require any kind of medical or a pill or prescription and things like that so this also deters people so if i start taking some treatment i i will be bound for this thing i tell i tell them it is not about the diagnosis we might make a diagnosis but we are not labeling you with that thing it's a temporary state of mind most of the conditions i'm not talking about severe mental disorders most of the conditions are temporary and they become completely all right common mental disorders we call them anxiety or certain kind of adjustment disorder stress related things completely reversible you'd be fine you can discontinue the treatment and go on like any other way somebody has a fracture they go through surgery or something then physiotherapy steps it will take 3 months for them to actually use that part of the body same thing happens with the mind give some take some support become better once you are better yes then you understand okay what led to what was the issue with me more introspection how i can prevent this from happening in the future so i would i would i would say it's not just the condition we are treating the person so our job as mental health professionals will go beyond just the condition they are meeting us so we're going to empower them after the condition also how they can prosper and be good with things so now another good trend is that a lot of people are able to identify this you know they are reaching out for therapy just for betterment also right you open any kind of social media now we have one day resilience course yeah yeah four hours you can overcome your procrastination you are going to be better so we are in this kind of a world but what i want to tell the uh, you know listeners is that it, it takes time it definitely takes time there is no there is no fast fast way of becoming immediately all right yeah you go for a session and you get immediate response no. and now you yes. you have this resilience or you've recovered all the stress you've had yeah so that that is like one set of you go and you come out already <laughs> recovered it doesn't happen so it's a process i call it as a process but it's good because most of the time if you go through some mental or emotional issues it is going to make you a stronger person that's what i feel because somebody has not experienced a mental health issue cannot understand what you are going through cannot understand why are you panicking what is there everything is good in your life why this panic so it's not like the person creates it nobody willfully creates negative things we don't want to create pain for ourselves right it happens right consciously we can't create it it's it's coming from somewhere but it has a as i told you body is very conditioned it has a meaning so pay attention inwards start working on it and you will understand more about it so i feel that once emotions are there experience experiential learning is really good you go through it you come out you have an amazing experience you will handle things in a much better fashion in the future so it, this is what is learning from the past that's great thanks a lot um it was great talking to you and uh, i'm sure all of our listeners will appreciate all the advice you gave today thank you pleasure is mine thank you